I had some fun. Let's talk about truck driving. <gasps> I'm running a temperature. I've obviously got coronavirus. I want to talk about truck driving on my truck driving. Ha! Right. Story. Truck driving story time. <laughs> I can't. John Cleese could not write what happened to me. I couldn't. Couldn't be done. Couldn't be done. You know, nobody from the Monty Python lot or the Goon Show could possibly. You know, Spike Milligan couldn't have thought about it. All right. We're in lockdown. Okay. A couple of days into lockdown. You know when they did the NHS clap thing. So we're a few days into lockdown. I get given a delivery, one of our clients in Hatfield. No, not the one I used to work for, although I do deliver there. <laughs> the wholesaler. So anyway, uh, I'll turn up, get given my bay, and I go on the bay. Now, the day started with, I was supposed to be doing my usual run. Now that's from where we're based to Telford and back again. But where we're based, I go around the corner, pick something up, and then I go to Telford, and then I come back, and it can take 12 to 14 hours. I'm happy with that, you know? When you pay by the hour, it's beautiful, isn't it? Because you're sitting around waiting for a bit. But I was supposed to be doing that, and I wasn't. Somebody decided that they weren't going to turn up for work. So, poor old transport guys, like, look, dude, um, we're running like two, three hours behind at the moment. Is there any chance that you could go to Colchester, do a collection there, go into Hatfield, deliver it, pick up the returns, and take it back to the place in Colchester? No. Whatever. I don't care. Fine. The funny thing is, when I worked for Continental Express, I used to do the collection in Colchester. <laughs> so I know the area. I know the person. I know the people. So anyway. I go down to this place in Colchester. Nothing untowards happened, you know. And I say, look, you know, I'm doing this collection for Zona. I've got to bring the returns back. Oh, we closed by seven. But not usually, but because of what's going on. We close at seven now. Oh. <laughs> Last time I looked, this is a 2545 Actros. It's not a Harrier jump jet. I can't get from Colchester to Hatfield, do the delivery and back again before seven. Hmm. Fine. This is the first thing that goes wrong. Normal truck driving experience all the time. Phone up transport, let them know, carry on. And there's a goddamn cat on that roof again. <laughs> and I know exactly which one it is. <laughs> and I am going to punch him. Anyway. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, anyway, so. Okay, phone up, have a conversation, whatever. Go down, do your delivery, see what happens. See what they can sort out. Yada, yada, yada. Fine. So I tally-ho all the way to my delivery, get given a bay, go on the bay, everyone's a winner. I walk round, <clears throat> I'm collecting the returns you've got, or so and so. Remember, I've got the paperwork delivering from this company. Yeah? I'm going back to this company with the returns. Right. Do you have a reference number drive? No. Ah, well, we can't authorise any returns without a reference number. Okay, fine. It's your product. You want to make sure it goes. Okay, I understand. Uh, all right, transport. Right, I need a reference number. X Y Z Z Z Z P P P nine 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 nine. Okay, cool. There we go. X Y Z P P P. Oh, that's not a reference number that we recognise. Here it goes. <laughs> so. We'll have to go back through our emails and see. And at no point in their emails with the company I'm working for does this reference number show up. But the only reference number my transport has is this. <laughs> Fun. All truck drivers know this. 
not exactly a John Cleesian situation. Mm. It gets better. <laughs> now remember we're in lockdown. Please remember we're in lockdown. Two metre roll. Everyone's going nuts. Okay, remember that. Okay, Keep that in your mind. So. <sighs> Can't have the returns. Nothing I can do. Well, I'll phone my guys again and see what I can do. I'll just go back to the cab, whatever. I don't want to stay in your waiting room. Drivers are waiting. Two metre roll. I'll go back to the cab. Yada, yada, yada. Fine. So I walk back to the cab, get in the cab, close the door, and I'm on the blower. <clears throat> Evening, Rob. As I'm on the blower, a driver from another company is reversing onto the bay next to me. Well, he doesn't go onto the bay next to me. He goes onto me. This is where it starts getting good. Now, <laughs> I'm on the phone. Yeah, I need that reference number. Oh, for God. No, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's hit me. That green cut. Look. Yeah, I'm on the phone to my transport guy, and I'm going nuts about somebody having hit me. The transport guy doesn't know I'm in my cab. He's now going nuts at me, thinking I'm getting hit by a truck. You duck and roll, bob and weave, bruv. Come on, then. that's what's going on. <laughs> Are you all right? Are you all right? Are you still there? He's, he's hit me. There's a shunter just over there, and I go, whoa. And the shunter's realised what's going on. He's hit. He's old, and this guy's driven forward. I'm like, silly bastard, just hit me. Are you all right, mate? Are you all right, mate? Are you all right, mate? You know. Are you all right? Yeah, no, no, I'm fine. I'm, I'm in the cab. Don't worry. Oh, okay. I thought you were out of the cab. <laughs> Like I'd be on the phone as I'm being hit by a truck, let's be honest. But anyway, so he's been bouncing up and down, so I'm now having to calm him down. All that's happened is the guy's gone slightly wide. The rubber, on, he's opened his barn doors, the rubber on the end has touched my mirror, it's gone into my cab, and he's moved some dust. Sorry for that edit, there was a random burp just then. <laughs> and he's moved some dust. Fortunately, I've seen... The shunter's looking at me as my mirror started closing. Done that. The shunter's hit his hole. This guy hasn't realised, but just thought he'll pull forward and do it again. No damage to my vehicle. I have never been hit by a truck and had no damage to my vehicle. Right? Pretty impressive. If, hold on, I'll just have a look. If I've still got the video on here, I'll tie the video that I took at the time in, um, so as you can see it. Hold on one minute, I, just if, if, if I've got the video on here. Um, I've also got to make sure that if I do have the video on here, it doesn't have the company's logo on it. Uh, no, that's the Picasso, that's that. Uh, right, hold on a minute, let me, I'll just turn the old volume down. Does it have the company logo? Ah, oh, bollocks, it does. Fuck it. But just so as you can hear. You took the dirt off for us. Yeah, you, you cleaned the dirt off for me, but other than that, it's all good. There you go. Okay, that's the video I took at the time. I can't show you it. It's got the company logo in. I, I forgot it's, it's on the door. Um, but there was no there, 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 was, there was no damage. So... I've turned out this guy when he's got on the bay. I've, I've had the phone call. There's still no reference number. Yada, 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 whatever. I've got out. I've climbed up onto his passenger side so I'm away from him. Because we've got to be. Let's be fair. And I've just told him, look, you hit my vehicle, but there's no damage, so I'll let you off. All right? I'm, you know, so and so. Ah, oh, cheers, mate. Whatever. He's just come back from eight weeks off with a busted hand. This is like his first reverse. And... In his defence, the place I'm at, they park their trailers like three deep, directly opposite the bays we have. So you have a very small amount of room. So in his defence, in between two vehicles, you can't open your barn doors when you're in the bay, you're close together. It's his first reverse after eight weeks off. He didn't cause any damage. I'm not having to go at him for that. We all make mistakes. Right. So I've let him know that I'm, I'm letting him off. Anyway, I've started walking back to let them know I don't have a reference number, yada, 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 picking up the story. The shunter's still there, and he's looking at me. He's like, you don't have to get them, don't you? I went, thank God you were looking at me, mate. It was just, oh, my 
God, I had visions of him coming in on me. You know what I mean? As I'm saying this, now remember, we're in lock, that two meter off. This guy's come out and he's one of those friendly drivers. You know, I'll have a conversation with you, but you know, some drivers will recognize this. Uh, a guy who's really friendly will tell you his life story and show you videos of it. Yeah, has to be talking to you. He's not a person who's good on his own, so when he gets to a group of people, he's really, really friendly. Well, this is that driver. And he's shorter than me by about a foot. I'm talking, all of a sudden, an arm comes over my shoulder. We're in lockdown, right? Guy's face, boom, he's a brilliant guy. Oh, I can't believe this. We all make mistakes. I couldn't believe I did that. And he's, you know, going on about everything like that. Arm round me, even the shunter's like, does he not know? You know, and he's right, right there. I have no clue about where he's been for the last eight weeks or anything. And then he's trying to feed me a cake. I don't mean give me a cake in a wrapper. I mean, in his hand, a cake towards my goal. <laughs> We're in lockdown for a couple of days and I've got this guy literally clinging to me a foot smaller than me, so you can you, you can imagine he's got a, you know, like that. Trying to plonk a cake in my mouth as a thank you. <laughs> so I've got all of his, you know, blah, 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 talking in my face and the cake coming in. So now I'm like, I'm not having the cake. You know, keep calm, have cake, but no, not in this situation. Thank you kindly, I'm watching my waistline, you know, I'm a bit big. Now, <laughs> so I'm dealing with this. I can't now get rid of him, okay? All the way into transport, he's right there, and he's one of those, talks in your face. Oh, I'm like, okay, calm down, mate. The problem is that as he's talking to me, he's showing me what he does, how he broke his hand. Now, okay, I'm from Basildon. Scar over my eye, various broken, bent fingers. I don't know whether you can see that, you know, crack to things like that i'm from basildon i can you know tasty when i want to be this guy is a boxing coach for disenfranchised youths and kids who've tried to kill themselves so he's doing good in society i give the man his due he's doing good okay so i'm turning this fun i'm not having a go at him personally he's doing good in society i wish there was more of him so he's obviously, whilst this is all going on, he's telling me about how he's broke his hand in the boxing thing, yeah, da, 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 and he's, he's doing all this, and he's got video of him doing it, and the people he's doing it with. I'm like, right, this is brilliant. I've now got to handle this with kid gloves, because if I piss him off, I'm going down. There's no way I'm winning. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's a boxer. So now I'm dealing with this. So I've had somebody nearly, I've had the person nearly reverse into my cab. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do the run I've been given. I've not got a right reference number, so I'm dealing with that bollocks. I've had somebody try and reverse into my cab whilst I'm on the phone to transport. Okay. Transport's now thought they're reversing into me, so I'm having to calm him down. The guy who's doing it in the middle of lockdown, he's in my face trying to force feed me a cake. And he's a boxer. See where I'm going with the John Clee stuff. But it gets better. Now, <laughs> I've dealt with this. I finally got away from him. I've got back in my cab. Everyone's a winner. They've unloaded me, they can't load me. I've now been given another place the other side of Sunbury. Okay, Sudbury, not Sunbury, Sudbury. Sorry, I'll get my words out in a minute. Okay, fine, it's, the, the thing is, this place is a nice place. It's, it's, it's a farm, middle of nowhere, it's rural, it's lovely. Getting to and from this place as a truck driver because of the undulating roads and the soft curbs and the blind bends where you've got to be on the wrong side of the road. And just the, the, the it, it's a pain in the rear end to get to. Okay? It's a nice place. It's a decent place. Decent people. Got no problem with the company. But it's one of those runs, like going into central London, but the country version of it. Drivers are like, oh, you're giving me that. Because you've got to, on the way back, or if you're going from our depot there, you've got to go through Clare. And there is a 90 degree in between ancient grade one listed buildings. And we have long rear steer trailers when we do this run. 
<laughs> and all these old buildings overhang the it's a proper and it, no none of the car drivers think you should be there so you can get out of their way so i'm rear steer 90 degree and they expect me to reverse with the rear steer fully <clears throat> not gonna happen so it's a pain but fortunately we're in lockdown so the roads are clear so brilliant so i'm trying to do a lot i'm on the 134 to other side of sudbury not up in uh, in Norfolk. Oh, I'm cracking on. Now this is NHS clap time. I'm trundling along. Now it's a national speed limit section of the road. I'm not in a faulty. I'm not in a thirty. I'm in a national speed limit in between any villages, whatever. And there's no street lighting. Pitch black. Okay. Now, fortunately, when I go down here with a long trailer, I don't tend to go much over 40 miles an hour anyway. Paid by the hour plus, you meet trucks coming the other way. And if you're going too fast, they are always going too fast. Off goes your door mirror and half the side of your vehicle. So I always take it steady. Pay by the hour, safety. I, I, just, I, I feel better doing that. Okay, you might hate me for doing it, whatever. Right, so, <laughs> I'm trundling on, see, see, I drive the coach. Now, I'm carrying on, I go around this bend, remember this is national speed limit, okay, this isn't going into a village, this isn't in a 30 or anything like that, I go around the bend, and you can't see around the bend, and it's the NHS clap, you know, <sighs> this group of people or family didn't really identify them but they dumped their car to the side of the road got out of their car now you're not in a village or anything got out of their car into the road three of them and they were hey, hey, clapping jumping up and down oh well and good fine i've come around this bend at 40 mile an hour and i'm not talking there three four five hundred meters down the road from the bend they're 50 metres from the bend. I'm in the class one with an oversized trailer and rear steer. I'm over 40 miles an hour, but not by much. And it's a Merc. And let's be honest, I love Mercs. I do. But their braking system leaves a bit to be desired. <laughs> so I come round this corner. And there's three of them. Bang on the brakes. The trailer brakes work well. I'm empty as well, so you can imagine the trailer's now a sled, and its rear steer, so the, <laughs> the rear wheels, wheel, rear wheels are slightly turned. <sighs> you know, I'm bloody hell. Right. Who does that? Who does that? Hmm? <sighs> They've scattered, and now I'm getting abuse held at me. Hurled at me. Don't you know it's the NHS clap? You're supposed to have stopped and got out and started clapping. What do you mean? Don't you mean? Seriously. Okay. Think about my day up to this point. <laughs> and now this. <laughs> They're having a go. Massive go at me. How we, how, how, pitch black road, off a blind bend, arguably 50 metres, something like that, and you're in the middle of the road, and you're not wearing high visors or anything like that, you haven't got your hazards on your car to give away that there's something, it's all black, pitch black, everything, car's off, the lights are up, and there's three of you, close quarters, in a lockdown, and it's my fault. That was my day on the NHS, you know, give them a clap, which is why I did the old salute to them. At the beginning of, obviously, the last one. But I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I was like, and that was, that was one day into lockdown. You couldn't write, you really, you could not make this crap up. The rest of the day was pretty much fault, flawless, to be fair, it just happened. No. <laughs> C 
couldn't do the original run because of obviously lockdown times changed. Reversed into potential SARS patient trying to force feed me a cake. <laughs> of all the things, you know, I have a chocolate bar, I have this cake. Really? <laughs> the cake is a lie. But <laughs> if you get that reference, thank you. But uh, it's just. <laughs> and then, as I thought, okay, I've got the run, I've got the journey no driver likes doing because of the, the roads we have to use. But you know, we're in lockdown, it's going to be empty, okay, fine. I might meet the odd truck or a bus coming the other way. And I nearly send three people to the NHS that they're clapping before they go to the morgue. I just, I just, you couldn't. You could not write this. You couldn't come up with it off the top of your head. It may be getting reversed into when you're on the phone to transport. That's funny, and it doesn't happen that often. You know? Getting false fed a cake by an overzealous person who's potentially got SARS. That's another funny one you could probably come up with. Nearly flattening three people celebrating the NHS. <laughs> Thus sending them to the NHS. All in the same day. <laughs> you just look at it, really? But yeah, that's... That's how my lockdown's been going. The other thing that's annoying me, the amount of people that are sending me stay at home. I can't. Why? Because I'm a key worker delivering food. Oh, okay. And I don't mean random people. I mean family members. Do you not get it? Now, um, something serious onto this. If you are a truck driver and you've entered a period where your company isn't classed as essential and your work has gone down, I know everybody has their own opinions of agency and whatever. You can remain PAYE on an agency you won't earn as much, but you can remain PAYE on an agency. If you are struggling for work, join an agency. Yeah. Hopefully in your area, there are agencies that cover what are classed as essential holiest. You know, like um, maybe there's a Morrison's or a Sainsbury's or an Audi or a Tesla. You know what I mean. Maybe there's a depot close to you. Maybe there's a haulier relatively close to you that delivers sanitary products, you know, bog rolls, women's sanitary stuff. Maybe there's a haulier close to you that does something for the NHS. Or the building supplies, for example, that's still classed as essential because, you know, people need it. Join an agency, okay? Okay, you might get one or two days a week, whatever, but your agency... Hopefully your company will be paying you 80% of your wage. They shouldn't have an issue with you going to an agency to make up 20% shortfall. Okay? Please, please, please go and do something like that. It doesn't matter whether you use the agency I'm with, which is AFE. Of course, you're going to have to be in certain areas to use them. You've got H&G. You've got ADR. You've, you, there's so many. TRG. I mean, there's so many of them. All up and down the country. Have a shifty. I know you've got some reservations if you're a company guy with your own vehicle and your company shut down and you're curious about how you're going to get, you know, make up the 20% shortfall that you're going to experience. Just for now. Okay, just suck up your pride. Become agency scum. It's perfectly fine. You can even call yourself a competent, unsupervised navigation technician. C-U-N-T for short. Now... Now, just, you know, if you need it, try and find it, okay? Unfortunately, some of you are going to be in areas where this isn't possible. 
my heart goes out to you. I mean, whatever you deliver in the haulage industry, whether it's an economic uh, necessity or whether it's a human necessity, we are all needed. So why some, you know, oh well, you know, we're shutting you down because we're all we're all we're all necessary. Um, so again, like I said, being serious for a moment, uh, just look, you know, for agencies if you're really concerned. I know some of you are gonna have the R sake with agencies, but consider it for now if if you need it. Okay, if you need it. I've had a couple of people messaging me, do I have any clue? I mean, and they're living all over the country. And I, I've tried to, you know, help them assist them. But again, in your area, there's a lot of drivers that are going to be doing this. Um, but if you don't mind traveling, do you have a caravan, mobile home? Can you rent one? Whatever. Get yourself down to the Midlands or the home counties. Yeah. Or even, you know, South Yorkshire, right? There is a metric sod ton of supermarket depots in those areas. And they are really looking. So if you have a caravan, if you have a mobile home, if you've got a relative down there that can let you stay in their converted loft or garage, whatever, if you need to, I mean find a company that will let you tramp for them that are doing the food stuff come down here and tramp for them just stay out during the coronavirus you know there are ways and means if you need it and again volumes are going to start drying up because everything's going to have been replenished people have got what they need you know so mm. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting a shift tomorrow, so I'm not concerned. But the day after, I might not get a shift because, again, volumes are going to start drying up. It's going to... Coronavirus is going to hit a lot of people. Okay, yes, the last few weeks, I've been earning... <sighs> I've been earning enough money to buy an Aston Martin-style thing, but it is going to dry up, okay? We're all going to face this, Yeah. Um, the longer this goes on, the more we're going to face. So if you can, just do it. No, oh, I don't like agencies. Agencies are scum. They treat you like crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, fine. But you got a mortgage payment, right? you got kids to put through school. Suck it up, buttercup. Join an agency. Get in your car if you've got an estate, if you've got a people carrier a caravan or whatever get down this area join an agency you know midlands this area yorkshire south yorkshire for example go to places where there are aldi tesco lidl morrison's asda m&s go to those places where there are those kind of depots you will find work so again a bit of seriousness here okay hope you enjoy that um, yeah, but uh, I think I might end this segment on the serious note before doing part three. And remember, get your beers ready and stuff like that. And um, would you like me to start part three with another um, another tipple? Would you? Okay, I'll start part three with another tipple. <laughs>